Guys, ASD is the choice for Epic's Open. They're up two to one here, but Curious may be able to get on a roll of his own. And ASD chose Ohana as his map, not Antika Ship yet. Antika Ship is still in the map pool, but ASD decides against it. He wants to play on Ohana, and he is a very decent player against Zerg. 60% win ratio, 15 games, not the biggest sample size, but still a little bit of an indicator that in this matchup. He's a lot better than against Tyron and against Protoss. I feel like uh, Epic Open knows exactly how oh. to cherry pick the best um, maps so that when Leenok comes out, all the maps are good for him. I like the bracelet. Yeah. That's actually exactly uh, the style that I usually wear. That's good. I just ask him where he, uh, where he got it. Yeah, that looks really interesting. It doesn't look like one of these usual souvenir thingies. Cool. Well, anyways, coming back to StarCraft 2, we have now Curious in the second match against Taran Gumiho. Had a decent run, but Curious stopped him, was able to make sure that the Taran player doesn't get any additional wins, and now we have a 2-1 score in favor of FXO here at the GSTL. We still have, as mentioned, Tiger Ship yet in the map pool. It might be one of the maps that is later used against the uh, FXO Zerg player, like for example, Linox. But now we focus on Kuros vs. ASD at the GSTL. The game is brought to you by Colin Wolf. It makes me sad that this is the, uh, well, the final will be the last time where we have the Ohana intro where I automatically start to bang my head, but yeah, it's a little bit unfortunate. Well, bottom right of the map, we have the star tail Zerg player. He was able to stop Gumiho. Is he able to stop the second Terran player for Team FXO? We'll find out. It is. Starting Curious. You know, Curiosity killed the cat, but it also killed the Nine-Tailed Fox in the previous game. Yeah, ASD. What kind of uh, yeah, what kind of animal would he be? Well, that's what we're gonna find out. We actually don't know, but he's starting to the top left. It's a Terran player, the second Terran player for Team Epic. So it is. Epic well, ASD. Definitely a lemur. Yeah, so I say lemur. Yeah, for sure. 100% a lemur. That's what he would be. What do you I don't think? Know. No. I mean, I'm thinking like there's no doubt in my mind he's a lemur. No, because I feel we had, I don't know who it was, but I feel in the last two days we had another player who looked a lot more like a lemur. That's why I cannot really accept him. There could be two animal. lemurs actually though, if you think about it. There could be. Every single time I think about lemurs, I have to think about Madagascar. I knew that was going to come up. And he is not really a lemur to me. Nah. Well. Uh, I don't know. But the problem is I can't come up with anything that would be better fitting, so... He is the lemur mm. now. See? Sometimes when you're confident, you just say things and nobody can stop you. No, I can't see ASD uh, walking into the picture when there's a beautiful sunset in Africa, being drunk like a monkey and singing uh, I'm a private dancer. I can't see that happening, no. Well... You know that scene, right? Yes. Okay, thank God. <laughs> I do know that scene. It's always frustrating as a Marine when you want to get that Overlord and you know you can't. It's like no matter how hard you stutter step, you <laughs> Overlord can't. keeps teasing him. It's just barely at the edge. Yeah, that's always that's always painful as a Marine. And you have to make the choice, do I risk my life to go and chase it down? Look at him. He teased him again. <laughs> Look at that. That Overlord is a girl. No. There are female overlords, actually. People don't know this. That's definitely one of them. That is high 
high level teasing. Yeah, such a tease. This SCV is definitely gonna die. Man, oh. just imagine how horrible it would be to date an Overlord. Not because they are so damn ugly, but also because they have so many arms. That's so many handbags that you have to buy them. Oh wow, yeah. If you think about it. Wow, that would be really expensive. You have to be rich, you have to be parting to date an Overlord. Yeah, plus, uh, you know, Overlords can control you. They really can. Uh, and that that's thats when you start to... They can what? They can control you, man. Well, that's one thing that they have in common with girls. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I mean, suddenly you you don't really want to see that chick flick, but you find yourself in the theater and at one point you're like, wait, wait, why did we come? How did I... Did you control man. me again? Stop that. My first girlfriend had these amazing puppy eyes. Every single time I was so angry. I, I swear to God, girls are born with this. They all have these puppy eyes and you are so mad and then suddenly they... They, you know, they tilt their head just 45 degrees. That's how you do it. 45 degrees, you lean a little bit backwards, and then you just go for the puppy eyes. You're like, please, for me. It always works. You know it's coming, but you can't dodge. It's, ah, uh, drives me crazy. No, it, it can't be tough. You have to develop a skill to be able to dodge this. What's also pretty tough here is that we have the yeah the Helatech actually really, really fast for uh, Curious coming back to StarCraft 2. He did get it before the speed. Yeah, he did, and that is that is an aggressive layer. I wonder what his plan is going to be with this. He's got four gases now. He may go for quick mutas here, but he's going to need to eventually get that speed research. And on the other hand, we have ASD with a double factory at this point. That's going to be a really interesting game, Wolf. No third base for Curious just yet, deciding to go straight into lair. Now we have the speed upgrade for him, but this is probably going to be a mutalisk build where he wants to really hit hard with a lot of mutalisks. I think so. Blair is finishing right now. He's got the gas. He needs just a few more minerals to start it. He does get double evolution chamber though, and he goes for evolution wow. pit. So uh, there are different paths to take to get to this point, but I guess this was the the one he chose. He decided to go a little bit late for these double evolution chambers, but yeah, I completely expect him with the timing that he hit here that he was going for a mutalist build on uh, Ohana, which you usually don't see that often. But yeah, it's really interesting to me that he really rushes Infestors. This is the style where you get the Infestor tech out a little bit faster and then decide to go into the third base later. You will be able to defend a bit easier against your opponent's pressure play. A really interesting strategy here by Curious. Yep. I, I like it. And ASD is going for triple Hellion production with Blue Flame as well. This is a, an older build, but it still is used oh. quite often. When these two builds collide, you better hope you get your Kungles off right. Well... I'm actually more scared for ASD than I am for Curious. Curious will be completely fine here. As that wall he that he sets bungles, up? Yeah, and the wall. If he is not completely oblivious to the minimap, when he sees the Hellions come, he can just block the ramp off and then use the fungals. He sees the Infestation Pit at this point as well with that scan. A lot of Hellions being hidden here. He doesn't really know just yet what's coming. But you're right. It's going to be so tough to do damage at natural, but at the third base, he will be a little bit exposed and vulnerable. But with good fungals, he should be able to lock these Hellions down. This is this is a pretty tense moment. This is the build-up to the attack right now, is getting those Hellions out. I actually think that with the creep spread that Curious has, he will be more than fine. The Hellions have to move out now, but it all depends on how well Curious sets up the wall. He needs to, he knows what's going on. He has to completely secure this wall, and his investors are popping out just a second, and he doesn't do it. Oh my god, I cannot believe this is happening. Well, he does get the fungal off regardless, yeah. and these Hellions are now useless. That was a great fungal, but still. He's hitting some of these drones at the third, but it was not enough damage for all the resources he put into this. To be fair, I did not see that one of the investors was already in the game. And uh, like this, he uh, actually lured the Hellions in. So I think I was actually well done. But at first, I was really scared for him. Yeah. Because we've seen so many Zerg players die because they did not put the Queen in the spot. Or just an extra evolution chamber that you could can start building. His Lings are actually not going to want to fight against these Hellions, but it's hard to run away as well. That was a good trade, but... You're so right, it was definitely a trap. Lures a man, grabs him, fungles him. And at this point, the rocks, of course, being destroyed so that Gumi, or not Gumi, excuse me, uh, ASD can defend his bases. Uh, there's not enough dropships in this game for this to be a Gumiho match, but. We'll see how ASD plays the late game as well. He's going into back. 
Yeah, and ASD immediately building this one missile turret at the front because he knows there will be a few investors and he doesn't want to face them when they are borrowed and moving towards his uh, natural base. He's actually not going in the mag. He's going into bio, but he's making another factory and he's starting Thor's. Really interesting play that we're seeing right now. In fact, I'm, the composition he's building is really unique. Three evolution chambers for Curious is researching three upgrades at a time. Yeah, that's that's pretty rare too. That's like really expensive, but it's kind of cool. I yeah. like it. I feel that you know the problem for ASD is that he didn't do any damage at all. He tried to move in with the Hellions, and the main problem is that he didn't. It's not the minerals that he lost. It's the time. His early game was completely obsolete. Everything that he tried to do and to accomplish was shut down by this early infest attack for Curious. So the strategy, the opening, works so well for the Star-Tail player, which enables him to get this Greater Spire, or not the Greater Spire, but at least the Spire and the Hive Tech at the 12 minute mark. And I'm interested to see what kind of timing ASD is going to hit right now. When is he going to attack? He wants to attack before the uh, Broodlords are there. Because only relying on Thors when you're up against Broodlords, that's usually not going to work that well. Yeah. He's making two Thors at a time. This is... This is interesting. Because Thors are really good against Investors as well if they can get in there, because they just... If you fungal them, yeah, they're so big, you're not really going to fungal much else. They have so many hit points that fungal's not really going to kill them. you got to drop a lot of Investorians to fight them. If you don't fight them the right way, they can just obliterate those Infestors, just two shots, boom, boom, and the Infestor blows off. So, this is a, a composition that I kind of like, but as you said, against the Broodlords, it's going to be a problem. He definitely is going to need Viking. He's making another factory right now. He's continuing Hellion production as well. This is this is a bio mixed in with Hellions and Thor's mix. I've never seen something quite like this before. We had it once with Marine King on uh, uh, Belcher Beach. That was a nice game that he played against Lenoch. But now we have one Infestor with a Fungal. He just wants to damage this army bit and also delay the move out. The Creep Spread is going to help him a lot, especially because it gives his Infestors a lot more mobility. Yeah. ASD's army is about 30 supply up on his opponent. It's a very strong army. Oh, and these Links are going to wish they took the other path. We have Roaches building though, and as long as the Infestors survive, he will be fine here, but ah, one of them dead, or he needs to stay on creep. Yeah. It's crucial for this to work. He yeah. has to be on creep. You know, if you're off creep, it's just so much more difficult to actually do little things like that with your Infestors. Loving the run by, yeah. great timing for him. This command center will have to be cancelled. Also a very, very good um, uh, fungal that he gets off. There are five medivacs. He's not able to go through the command center because there are still a few, yeah, a few Hellions left. But now here comes the attack by Curious. Moves in another two final hit. There may be too many roaches here. It looks like there are. And the wings come in from behind from the that Hellions. run by, and this is going to be it. It will clean everything yeah. up. The Hellions are gone. And with the Hellions gone, this is a problem. But not enough energy left for the investors to fungal the Medivax. That was amazing. Saving three Thors here. This is crazy. This is the best thing for ASD. It was really quick thinking. Yeah, that was that was insane. Now he has gone for five Thors. That's, that's a scary number. Saving these three Thors makes his army actually still very viable to move around on the map because he's got that bio force mixed in. It's hard to keep this army alive though once it gets fungled several times because you can't really repair and also keep your you know your medevacs there to heal your bio force. So it's a little bit hard to, to keep this army alive. The Thors here are very low. A fungal helps finish them off, and he, the flank is good. He needs to target the roaches a little bit better. The more roaches we have the more we need to see tanks for ASD, and he doesn't have any. This is his biggest problem. Thors are not too bad against Roaches, but the problem is as long as soon as the drug player has a lot of them, you need to have a few tanks in your army composition. Yeah, and he's just, he's showing no, no interest in making them. He's only making Thors. He's still producing Thors right now. He doesn't have a lot of minerals, actually. He's more so got the gas, but... The upgrades are also really good for Curious. I can... I, I kind of come up with the reason why he doesn't want to go into plus three. There it is. This is a really strange reluctance to build siege tanks. I feel the reason why he's continuing to build Thors now is because he knows he's going to have to deal with these Brewlords. He wants something. But he also needs to make some Vikings. Yeah, right now Thors wouldn't be the answer anymore. He needed them a little bit earlier. Of course, if you have them, that's awesome and you have to rely on a few. But now he has to deal with the uh, Brewlords and he does not have any Vikings. He will only use his Thors. 
There are no queens with this composition, so he cannot use Transfuse. Yeah. He doesn't even have that many Thors, though, anymore. I don't think he can hold off this attack. I don't think so, either. The tech is way too good for Curious, and he is on a roll here. He is forcing ASD back, and ASD relying on a single Thor to thwart this army. This is not gonna happen. Yep, the depot's starting to fall here at the third base. He can't even hold that. And the Thor doing a lot of damage up here on the high ground, but it's not gonna last forever. The Roach is finally pulling back here. But he can kill so many SCVs. He's gonna trap them. A good fungal again. Too bad he couldn't get the SCVs, but he's just gonna keep trading against the army. There's no way to deal with these brood lords. Yeah, there is ground support. The road just makes sure that the brood lords are not being attacked by marines. We have Lings heading towards the base to the right side, and they are gonna kill the commands and are gonna kill the SCVs. This is yeah, the end of the rope for ASD, I feel. He can delay it a bit longer, but if he doesn't come up with an ingenious idea of how to win this game, he will have to GG out. He's trying to go for a run-by attack, but, well, is there's that going to work, Will? No. I mean, there's there's not enough units underneath the medevacs. The medevacs are just floating here, and the corruptors are going to take them out. That one Thor is helping out to the side, but all the medevacs are starting to die at this point. The big problem for ASD is not the gas this in this game, it's really the minerals. Yeah, ASD doesn't have... Uh, he just doesn't have an economy anymore and he can't rebuild an army. There's especially no, not this type of army. Yeah, there's no mining at the third, there's no mining at the fourth. ASD is down to 90 supply and parting, uh, sorry not parting but of course Curious, is not only maxed out, he's on his way to get plus three, plus three, he has the better tech. He has a bank, he has four bases. GG. GG indeed. Game over. Curious ties up the series. What Gumiho did for Team FXO, Curious achieved for Starfield. Absolutely. The score is now tied. ASD with a cool build, but it didn't get fleshed out exactly like he wanted it to. So now Epic's Open again is at the place where they have to choose another player. And I, I'm feeling tier now. Tier. Not because I'm sad and, and I'm a little bit upset, but actually I think tier is the next appropriate player. I can see tier. I can definitely see him come out next. Either Tia or another or Zerg player for ZVZ. The lucky, problem, lucky could come out here. The problem that I have is, with the ZVZ is that Kyrus is really good in the mirror match. This is one of the matches where he plays on a very high level. So I could definitely see him facing a Protoss player now. With the map choice that you have, you could go for this. But it's going to be interesting. For FXO, things are getting a little bit heated. Yeah. You don't want to use... At least I... Well, actually... Hmm. Do you want to lose Linog in a ZVZ? He trained for it for his quarterfinal match, lost to Sniper, but still, a ZVZ always feels a little bit, in a best of one, a little bit random. I think they want to use Linog last. They always yeah. do that. They're picking the pro. I mean, you can already tell the base on the maps that have been picked. They're picking maps so that when Linog comes out later, it's going to be a good map for him no matter what. Well, we still have, you know, we still have Antigua Shipyard in the map pool. True. So. You could see Lucky on Antigua Shipyard for ZBZ. I would, I would like to see that. Um, Tira as well, though, could be played on really any of these maps. Uh, not Grand Lagoon, but that's a good map for Zerg for Leenok later. So, Whirlwind, I think, is something he also wants to save. So probably I'm thinking Cloud Kingdom or Antigua with either Tier or uh, Lucky. To be completely honest with you, I have not a single idea what FXO is going to do now. Yeah, this is, this is a pretty pivotal moment here in this match. I feel right now it really comes down to Choya turning around and asking the team, okay, who of you feels the most confident in this matchup, and not only in the matchup, but against Curious um, as an individual player. I think yeah. that's what it kind of comes down to. Of course, you have an idea of who you want to pair up with whom if you go into a team match, but at some point it's just really about do you feel you can take him? Are you confident enough? Or are you right now in a mood where you, don't, where you think, okay, well, I'm a little bit too anxious about meeting this guy. I don't really want to face him. Lucky top right. Yeah. Could be him. Gonna be tier instead. Yeah. Gonna be tier. So uh, I expect to see Antigua Shipyard pop up on the screen as well. Our initial idea, our initial assumption here proves to be right. It is tier. It is a Protoss. Curious is looking at it, he's like, okay, well, that's fine. I also like the idea of Cloud Kingdom as a map for this match as well. Uh, Antigua Shipyard is just a map that usually a Protoss player tries to avoid. If you are not successful with the two base timing, then you are in a lot of trouble. And especially with how meticulous Curious is with his creep spread, I feel a two base timing against him would be very difficult to pull off. Very true. At least on Antigua Shipyard. Well, the map isn't actually chosen just yet. 
You can see some of the stats here of Tier. He's one of the highest ranked players in the GSTL right now. And usually comes out around the middle, you can see, based on his win rate by order of appearance. Doesn't come out in the last part. Cloud Kingdom is the map. Yep. A good choice for this Which, matchup. Yeah, it still leaves Grand Lagoon, Abyssal City, Antigua Shipyard, and Whirlwind in the map pool. And as you just said, you uh, yeah, you just talked a little bit about it. Tia has a pretty good record for his team in the GSTL, and he's actually the best player for Team Epic, so in the team league. He has uh, three wins, one loss. And he is one of those players who still has a slight chance to, yeah, to actually catch up with Yongwa. It's very unlikely he would have to pull an uh, all-kill in the, the finals yes. if they reach them. But he still has a shot. It's, it's still possible, yeah. I want to see what build he's got planned for Cloud Kingdom. This guy is hes the opposite of normal when it comes to builders and his play style. He can play that once in a while straight up game, but I don't think that's what we're going to see from him here. He's one of the hardest training players. Well, when Epic's Open picked him up, um, that can, uh, everyone in Epic's Open was telling me this guy's got potential, he's looking really strong, we think he may be one of our best players in the future, and I mean, basically they saw the future, because that's what we're seeing right now. Cloud Kingdom, the map for the Zerg versus Protoss match, and the series is tied. We are in the second semi-final. The winner of this is going to play in the finals yes. against Team MVP. Here with the hot pad in the booth, trying to keep himself warm here. He looks very calm uh, considering the situation he's put in now. Curious, on the other hand, looks as usual, emotionless in the booth. He is ready to go. The map is loading. It is Cloud Kingdom. This is the GSTL semifinals day number two. Star Tail against Epic's Open. Cast by Color Wolf. Go,